So the first thing we're going to look at is trap safety. That's right, yes. Before we do anything on the machine, we would always take the spring off, um, safety first. As you can see at the moment, the machine is in the safe position. We'll come round to that later on, but first thing we'll do, we'll take the spring off. How to take the spring off, you'll see it's in the, it's in the safe position. If we nudge it on the, on the disarm and nudge uh, box, we'll nudge it round. You'll see the, the spring is actually coming back on itself. As we're coming round, you see the arm's now sticking out the front of the machine and the spring has no tension on it whatsoever. Now this is the perfect way to take the spring off. A lot of people have the spring at full tension when they're trying to take it off and it's actually harder to do that as you do it. So now that's there now, we'll take that there. So to take the spring off now, we see we've got no tension up whatsoever on the spring. As we wind that off, you see the spring's coming back. Take the nut off. And now the machine's fully safe to work on. Okay, so we're now going to look at knife edges. That's right. What your knife edge is designed to do is to separate your clays as it's obviously coming through your, the knife edge system. Um, regards of, of sticky clays, frozen clays, that's what the knife edge is to do. It's designed to split the clay uh, in order for the bottom one to fall onto the, onto the throne plate and obviously your next one to go around the carousel. Um, regards of, of, of paint um, of, on, on clays, when, when it goes, when some Clays are painted more than others. Different manufacturers use a bit more paint on them than uh, than, than other other manufacturers. Um, so what we're looking to do is, when we change from a black to a to an orange clay, we're always looking just to check knives just to make sure. Different manufacturers are different thicknesses, um, so that's another thing to be aware of if you if you ever swapping clays over. Um, but that's what your your knife edges are designed to do. So as your as your clay comes in, it goes through. It separates the bottom one. That one falls down and then the other one comes back round. In regards of, of setting of knife edges, one of the most common faults when, you actually, when people set a knife edge um, is that they think that the clay is, uh, the, the, the knife edges are designed to touch the clay that's actually due to be thrown. The knife edge is designed to take the, the one off the top. The actual bottom one doesn't want to come into contact whatsoever. So as we bring it through, we're actually, when the bars on the carousel are pushing the knife edge through, you don't want the, the clay that's just about to be thrown to come into contact at all with the knife edges. If it does, it means it's going to crack it or, or take a chip out of it. And of course, when it actually comes to be thrown, it more likely come out as a no bird. So one of the most common reasons why a trap will break clays is the knife edges are set incorrectly. So now we've seen what the knife edges do, the important thing is, obviously, is how do you adjust them? Okay, um, on, on the knife edge block, and this, uh, when we're setting the knife edge, that goes right the way across our, our, our range, probably 80% of our range on how to set knife edges. Um, we're talking about the, the, the Harriers, Eagles, um, Falcons, the Rangers, the Shondells, things like that. You know, we're talking about more or less every machine we make they have a very similar set of, of knife edges. Regarding of, of setting them, as we bring the clay through here now, we're looking to find an equal gap at the front of the knife edge and also at the back of the knife edge. What we don't want is the, the outside of the, or the inside of the knife edge to actually touch the drive band. That's what we were talking about before. We don't want the knife edges to touch the clay at all. But obviously we need to have the, the knife edges open a certain amount to get, let the clay pass through. And more importantly, the one on the top has to sit on the top of them as it rides over before it comes down the letdown ramp. So we're looking for a couple of millimetres uh, from, the, from the inside of the blade or the outside of the, of the blade of the one at the back. And regards of, your th of the thickness, uh, we're talking about the thickness of your thumbnail, which is, which is located, you have, you have a, a nut there which you can raise up or down. Um, it's the same at the back. All the knife edges are slotted, so you can move them in or you can move them out accordingly we're looking to, as, as to go through, is as we bring it to there now, we're looking for a couple of millimetres from the drive band of clay front and back. If we can achieve that and get the knife edges passing through there, the clay passing through the knife edges without it coming into contact, we know we, we set our, our knife edges correctly. When, when we come to set the knife edges, as we bring the clay in there now, what we're looking for is, is the, an equal gap front and back 
Okay, what we've got at the moment is that as, as the clay is coming in, we see it's not getting in contact with the, with the blades at all. Where the drive band of the clay is here, we don't want the, the, the blade on the inside where it's been linished there to touch it. So we're looking for the clay to pass through without touching the knives. Regards of adjustment, we're looking for the thickness of your thumbnail for your height. We'll just take that back now. You see there's an adjustment under here where there's a nut with the 10 millimeter spanner. We can, we can slacken that off. You can either lift him up or we can lower him down regardless of what, which other clay we're using to send the height directly. So as we're looking at that there now, thickness of your thumbnail, the height, if, if the knife edge is too high, the, the, the clays on here will be chipped. If it's too low, it'll score the clay that's just about to be thrown. So we now we're looking at there, we've got an equal gap coming through. This one, front one here could just slightly go in a little bit. We'll bring that round. Slacken it off. Give it a little tap in. Bring the clay around. That's perfect. Now we've got an equal gap front and back. Lock him off. check him right the way past that's perfect the knife edges are now set correct when we come to remove the carousel to check the back knife edge 19 millimeter spanner wind it off Better. Just need him to just lift him up ever so slightly. So you can see the adjustment nut under there. We can just wind him up. Let me check that there now. That's it. We've got the thickness of our thumbnail, so we know we're not going to be pinching the clay. And then bringing it through. If we need to move the the knife edges in or out, we can just put turn it like easier. And then we can either tap tap forward or tap back. carousel back on it's important to get the right tension um, on the blue spacer because what could sometimes happen if the, if the carousel is too loose uh, when it gets low it will start double feeding because it's got the, it'll just keep spinning round so as the rear pusher pushes it it'll push it too much so when we put our spanner back on wind it back up just to compress the, the spacer ever so slightly what we're looking to do is when the actual carousel spins, we're looking for it to spin, stop, spin, stop. You don't want it continuously going round. So now we've put that back on, we'll just come back in and check our knives. First we bring the clay in, make sure we're right front and back. We've got an equal gap from the outside of the, of the blades to the, to the drive band. We've got the thickness of our thumbnail um, when it comes to the, the height, so we know now that knife edge is set correctly. We've now looked at the separation of the clay, and now we're going to look at the height of the arm. That's correct. Um, the, the, the second most reason why you obviously track um, clays um, break coming off the machine is the, the height of the arm uh, relationship to the casting plate is set in correctly. What we'll do, we'll bring the clay through our knives, we'll drop them onto what's called the soft fold plate. What we're looking to try and find is to have um, an equal gap from start to finish. So when the arm actually comes in to collect the clay, from when it exits at the end of the throwing plate. So as we look down at it now, we'll see we've just got a couple of millimetre gap underneath the friction strip here to the relationship to the arm. So 
So as we're looking at it, it meets under there, we slacken that off now, we can just lower him down or lift him up accordingly. You can see the clay is actually moving up and down on the plate as we're doing that. We're looking for a couple of millimetres as we move that round. We come on to this, there's four setting points. The first one is underneath the soft fold plate, which is located just behind the roller switch. The second one is just on the, on the side of the frame on the opposite side, and then you have two at the front. So we're looking for an equal gap from start to finish. As we bring that round there now, we'll see that we've got a, a, a nice gap there of a couple of millimetres. As we bring them round there, again the same, and they call towards the end, it's the same again. Because regards of when, if it was, for instance, if it's too tight, so the actual clay is pinching on the casting plate, that will cause a no bears. The other one is if the uh, if it's set too high, so the casting plate is too low, or the arm's been bent. Uh, you lose distance uh, um, on your targets and the other one is when the clay comes off it wobbles so basically it's not getting pushed properly by the arm so when it comes off as the clay goes away you can see the clay it wobbles as it comes out of the machine so that's when you know just by looking at the machine something's not right it's not set correctly and of course the obvious one if it's if the clay is breaking when it comes off so in regards of actually setting it we'll bring that back round to the start bring that clay through First thing we'll look at is make sure we've got a nice gap here. That's fine there. So now we've checked in there. We just follow the arm round. We just see we've just started to go a little bit tight there. So again to adjust. Just slacken that one off. And you'll see now as we as we wind that down, you'll see the gap gets greater, or we can take it back up. So what we're looking to find is just a couple of millimetres. which is about there, lock the locking nut off, just double check, that's fine, and we know the casting plate is now set correctly. So Monty, we're now going to talk about arm timing. That, that's right. Um, what? could potentially happen if, um, if if the timing has moved for instance um, and it's not going over what we call the um, center of the machine so it, it's not firing you're not getting the full use of your spring so your spring is fully wound up but you're not getting the distance on, on your clays is potentially what could happen your arm timing has slipped okay so what we're going to do is show you how to, to where it is set correctly uh, and also how to adjust it if need be um, as we go so we need a, 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 a torque bar to do this um, with a 10 millimeter Allen key or, or a bar would, would do it, but a torque bar preferably. Um, as we look at it at the moment now, with uh, the the main shaft is just poking just ever so slightly outside of the box section. This is a super sporting machine, um, so the the timing on the arm timing on this machine is different um, to a Falcon, a Ranger, Eagle, Harrier type of, of ones, but they all operate more or less on the same principle. They all go over centre at more or less the same point on the frame, but it's just actually where the bearing house is. Time, the timing marks are just slightly different. So on the Super Sport model, we have the, the, the main shaft just poking shy of, of, the, of the frame, where there's a split in the frame um, with two bolts that go through, and basically you line your clamp block up with the split in the frame. Um, bearing in mind you've got that just poking through there slightly, but to actually adjust it if needs be, you'll be slacking them off. Okay. You can see that we actually can move the arm forward if need be. So we can move the arm as we go. So what we'll do now, because we've moved the shaft, we can just nudge him round on here. Bring him round to where he wants to be. And as you see, he's just sticking slightly through the box section. Move the arm in line with the split, with the clamp block. Bring him in there. We know we're like front and back. Sort bar. And as you're doing that, how would you know what is the right position? Uh, the right position is, is, is as you bring it, as you bring him round there. Now we know we're, 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 the um, the main shaft is just poking just slightly through, and then you, your reference is your clamp block is in line with the actual split. It's when you put your spring back on um, it, to, to know that you've actually got it right. Um, we're looking for the, the actual machine to fire when it goes over the centre of the frame. So as we look at the when we're at the back of the machine with the spring on. When the actual machine fires, it goes over. When it goes over centre, 
the trap fires. For instance, if it was uh, going over before it gets to the centre, uh, that's probably why you're getting breakage of clays because the arm is, is, is smashing straight through the, the clays. Uh, if it's going over later, what you'll find, you'll find it, you find you're losing distance or you press the fire button and you wait for a long time, then the machine releases. And basically what that is, it's gone over and it hasn't gone over what we call top dead centre and that's what's causing it to to be uh, to, to, to actually come off the, the arm a lot later. And so we're now going to look at the Falcon for the timing on the arm. That's correct. What, the ha what happens is uh, all our machines more or less operate on the same principle. Um, they all go over the centre at more or less the same point. When we're talking centre, we're talking centre of the frame. But the, there is no um, official timing mark on a on a Falcon um, as it is to a Super Sporter. Um, the Falcon uh, arm timing covers right the way across the range from your Rangers, your Eagles, your Harriers. It all operates on the same pr uh, principle. So to do it on, on this one now, I'm just nudging round. It is more or less the same as the Super Sporter. As we bring that net round there now, we're looking for the, the main shaft just to poke shy of the box section, which it is doing there now. And then if we have a, a straight edge on the edge of the box section, we're looking for arguably between 10 and 12 millimetres. You see that that's fine there now. So your straight edge on the box section and with a ruler, you want to measure it with a between 10 to 12 millimetres. And uh, if that's set correctly, the machine will work fine. So now we've set that there. The other way to do it is when the spring is on, Once we, if we've set it correctly there, once the spring is on, we're looking for the machine. There's no, there's no spring on, on this one, obviously, but as we bring that there around, we're looking for the, the actual trap to fire when the arm goes over the centre of the frame. So the centre of the frame is basically here. As that comes around there now, I would expect that machine to fire if the arm timing is set correctly. If it's not set correctly, the machine could potentially fire there, so it's firing at a later, a later period. If it's, if it's set too advanced, what will happen? As we bring that way around there now. If it's set too advanced, it could potentially fire there, which is too soon, and that's what caused the clays to break, because the arm is smashing straight through the clays. So just to go through that again, bring it round. We're looking for the main shaft there. It's just poking just shy of the box section, just coming through. A straight edge in the ruler, straight edge on there. And now we're looking between 10 and 12 millimetres, arguably, from, from, the, from your straight edge to the edge of your clamp block. It's actually got that there. And again, you would nip it up. To adjust it if needs be with your torque bar, just slacking him off there now. So we've got complete movement under there. Bring him round. Okay, we see the, the main shaft just poking through. We'll just get it roughly to start with, get our two straight edges. Put your straight edge on there. Check, that's fine. Tighten them up. Okay, and then just double check, bring them round again. That straight edge one more time. One there, and that's fine. Perfect. So now that we've worked a lot on the front of the trap, you're now going to look at the the rear timing. That's correct. Um, what sometimes can can happen, you'll see the machine out in the field. The machine will be firing, but actually the the carousel uh, actually won't be rotating. So you can see the arm firing, but basically no clays are coming out. Um, regards of it's what we're going to discuss now, the rear pusher timing, that is right through the range of all our sporting machines. Um, as I said before, with your Eagles, your Harriers, your Falcons, your Ranger 8s, even down to your Rabbits and Chandelles, all the rear, all the rear pusher timing 
on the majority of our traps is all operated on the same principle. Um, you'll see this is our rear pusher at the back here. Your rear pusher is what basically what it is. It pushes the it pushes the carousel around. Um, we have a crank on this side here, which which is fed off the gearbox, which comes back, and there's a there's a clamp lock on the back here on the rear of the machine, and then that the swan neck, which which goes through this, the, the the back of the machine. Uh, is bolted on. We have a little roller on the side, and then the actual pusher rod on the top. Um, for for actual your, your settings of, of your rear pushers. As we're looking at it on the on the clock, uh, as we're on the clock face on the gearbox. At the moment, there we're coming straight back. So we're, as we're stood behind the machine, we are we are perfectly in the six o'clock position. So it's coming straight back towards us. Um, where your rear pusher is, there we can slacken him off at the back here. You actually see this this actually starts to swing. So if for instance if, you, if the, the trap's firing and it, 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 it's not feeding all eight or, or six if it's a six stack model, uh, what you'll find is that the actual the, the rear push time is slightly slipped. So it might push five and then it might not push the sixth one. Um, so we're looking to how uh, to set it up correctly. As I said, we've got the the the, um, the, the crank is coming back in the six o'clock position. So he's coming straight back down towards us. We want to push this to as far over as it will possibly go to the to the right hand side. If it's a right handed machine, obviously if it's a left handed machine, you would actually push it all the way over. Still have the gearbox, uh, the crank coming uh, at six o'clock, but obviously everything on a left handed machine is the opposite way around. So as we know, we know we're in the six o'clock position. We've pushed that as far over as it, as it will go. Most of the machines, or more or less all the machines, have a little groove in them there now. So as that as the roller goes over, he can't go basically anymore. It sits in the it sits in the groove. So we want to tighten that back up. Arm loading. Start running the machine. And you see that every time it comes back, indexes the carousel or pushes it round, no problem at all. So we touch on that again, we're straight back towards you in the six o'clock position, as far over to the right hand side it will go. Nip him up, tighten him back up on the bolt there. When we're actually coming to actually set it, you don't don't worry about where the position of the carousel is. Basically what happens as the rear pusher shaft, if we take that move that around there so it's in between a pocket of a carousel, when we actually start moving it, you'll see it comes back. And now he'll self time himself, so he'll come now, he'll push the carousel, he'll come round, he'll grab hold of it, push it, and then off we go again. So even if you do move the carousel away from the rear pusher, he will just catch it up and then he goes back to self timing himself that way. So don't worry too much about where the carousel is in relationship to your rear pusher. As long as you're six o'clock, straight back into the six o'clock position. Just nudge him into six. Six o'clock position. As far over to your right hand side it will go if it's a right handed machine or as far over to your left hand it go if it's a left handed machine. But as long as you're 6 o'clock, far over to the right as possible, that's your rear push your time and set. Okay, so we're now going to look at the settings on the casting plate. We'll look at your, uh, your roller switch, your softball plate, um, your teal finger and your spring finger. Okay, first one is, is your roller switch. The general settings is set on the where we have a bracket underneath is set it halfway. We don't want it too far in and then we don't want it too far out. Uh, halfway is the recommended setting for your roller switch. You have a teal finger under here. The teal finger is sitting just in front of the back rail. A lot of people think this should sit on top of the back rail to stop the clays falling out. It's actually not designed to do that. It's actually designed for when the machine is in teal. Um, when the when the clay comes down, instead of the clay knocking onto the back rail, it acts as a cushion. So it just takes. So as it lands on the on the soft plate, and then as the arm comes in, the teal finger lifts up, and then it just rolls ever so slightly onto your back rail. So you uh, you want your your um, spring finger set just in front of your of your uh, back rail. Um, spring finger just make sure he's you know there's no. Uh, 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 exact setting on it because it, 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 it's bolted on so basically just make sure it's nice and free it's it's not uh, getting stuck or anything like that there's no bits of debris under there so just make sure it's nice free a soft fall plate is probably the the main one actually under here um, if, you, if your soft fall plate has no bounce in it your soft fall plate acts as a shock absorber for you when your clay lands 
So basically what you're having to do, you just want it, you don't want it like a trampoline, so it's really springy, you want just a, you know, a, a nice little bit of, of play in it. So as we're, as we're just tapping that there now, there's a, a little tap, and that just takes the shock out of the clay when it comes through your knives and lands on your soft fork plate. If all them are set correctly, you know, we should be we should be good to go to, to come on to putting the spring back on now that we've finished going through the machine. So, so one of the keys about the Promatic trap here is everything is designed to make sure that the clay has a perfect flight, yes. but is also going to limit the amount of no birds each time. Correct. When you think the, the lifestyle of a clay from when it's actually made to its journey actually to a, to a clay pigeon trap, it goes a long road, um, sometimes goes overseas and then it goes, it gets put on the back of a quad or the back of a trailer. So we're trying to get, give the clay the best possible chance to actually come out of the machine um, you, you know, in a whole position. So by adding all these little things with like putting the soft fall plate on, your spring finger, um, they will all help the clay you know, before it actually gets actually thrown out of the machine. So we're now finally putting the trap back together, so the last piece to go on is the spring. Okay, when we, when we come to put the spring back on, this is what a lot of people um, tend to not understand how to take the spring off correctly, uh, or more importantly put the actual spring back on. As we, if we nudge this round now, we bring it down there, we bring him back into the 6 o'clock position with the, with the crank, or more importantly, so the arm is sticking straight out towards you, as you, know, as you can see it's straight out towards you. So uh, with the hook, the hook actually the hook eye facing in, like so, and that's off the back. When you actually come to put your spring on, you should always put enough tension on the on the spring, so it just stretches the coils ever so slightly. Um, you know, you don't have to, depending if you if you're going to be setting the target, actually stretch the spring to completely. But when you actually put it on, you don't want the spring too loose, so you just see the coils have just opened up ever so slightly, and just lock your two nuts off there. And then what we have on the, on the on the disarm position. This is the most important thing now because we're going to be making the machine uh, making the machine live. So we have disarm nudge off and arm load. You'll see at the moment the arm is sticking straight out the machine. So where it is on off at the moment. So we'll take him to arm load, which makes sure there's nothing in it. Arm load. Okay, this means the machine is now cocked. Okay, which is in a dangerous position. So we'll always operate from the back of the machine. If we take him up to off, disarm, you see the trap is fired, but the trap hasn't recocked. When we were talking about the clock face before, when we were setting the rear pusher timing, we are now in the 12 o'clock position. Now, to make this machine perfectly safe, we will nudge him round, so he comes to an 11 o'clock position. Basically, now we can push the arm under, okay, and we see that the gap between the pin of the of the main shaft and the drive bolt on the crank is actually getting smaller okay so as we're pushing there as we're pushing what you'll hear now you'll hear you'll hear a dung okay so basically this is the actual trap firing okay what's happened there now the machine effectively has fired so it's gone over center so we'll go through that again we'll disarm it around bring it around so the arm is sticking straight out on the front of the machine we will arm load him, so take him straight down to arm load. Now you see the machine is cocked, we'll take him up to off. A lot of people think when you turn the machine off, for instance if you're filling the machine and things like that, off is actually not, the machine's still dangerous. It may be, it may be that there's no power coming into the machine, but it could actually still fire. So we'll disarm him, okay, disarm him, you'll see the, uh, with the arm sticking out, nudge him round, 11 o'clock. Push under. Well, again, you'll hear that dung. Now the machine is perfectly safe. We can push that arm, not a problem at all. It's perfectly safe position. What a lot of people sometimes do, and this is one of the main reasons, uh, which, which well, one of the problems that can happen, if, for instance, now we go to arm load, and bring it around, we disarm him. When people actually nudge it to get it into the 11 o'clock position, they actually go too far. 
Now, for instance, if I was to push that in, what would happen is the actual machine would come to fire and this pin here would come round and smack onto the drive bolt, which would shear the pin. So if you do go too far, for instance, you come into 10 o'clock, don't worry, arm load him again. Comes round, disarm him. 11 o'clock, push your arm in and then you'll hear your dung. That's perfectly safe. If you do go too far, just repeat the process and go to 11 o'clock. Okay, so as we're looking at the machine now, we're, um, we're, we're in the 11 o'clock position on the on the uh, on the gearbox. The arm is pushed under, uh, so the machine is actually safe. A lot of people, when they send the machines um, back here to for service, the arm is actually sticking out. If you if you leave the arm sticking out, it's potentially going to get damaged. Um, so always take it to 11 o'clock. Push it under, and this is the, the safest possible way. Even if it's going, uh, you know, you finish shooting for the day, and you put your traps in the back in the container or or wherever they may be stored. Always keep your arm into the eleven o'clock position. Push your arm under, and keep it, everything's perfectly safe. Your arm can't get uh, can't get bent, and more importantly, you can't get hurt.